Hello everybody, my name is Georgie Grimm and today I want to talk to you guys about Princess Diana and what happened to her and the conspiracy theories surrounding her death. So basically, this is going to go into my Dark Hollywood series. And in this series, I want to do a whole bunch of different conspiracy theories about celebrities and the paparazzi and how that can affect them in their daily lives. And one of the very famous conspiracy theories is the one about Princess Diana and what happened to her. So basically, who Princess Diana is, is that she is a princess formerly known as Diana, Princess of Wales. She was born July 1st, 1961, and she died on August 31st in 1997. She was a member of the British royal family as the first wife of Charles, Prince of Wales, who's the eldest child to the heir of the apparent queen, Elizabeth II. She was the mother of Prince William and Prince Harry. Basically, Diana was born into the Spencer family, who is of a family of the British nobility with royal ancestry. And she's the youngest daughter to John Spencer and Francis Roche. And she was educated Educated in England and Switzerland in 1975, she became known as Lady Diana Spencer after her father inherited the title of Earl Spencer. Princess Diana was married to Prince Charles and this all happened on July 29th, 1981. She and her husband really liked to do a whole lot of charity work, especially with the HIV AIDS Association and with cancer. And they were really active with helping people and donations and basically raising awareness of illnesses and diseases that were happening. And they really helped a lot with the HIV AIDS campaign. And so Diana was a very watched princess because the paparazzi were so fascinated by her and her life and her life as a member of the royal family. And so because of this, there were paparazzi everywhere and they would constantly photograph her and her husband. And this eventually led to her unfortunate death. On August 31st, 1997, Diana died as a result of injuries sustained in a car crash in the Pont de l'Alma Road tunnel in Paris, France. Her companion, Dodi Fayed, and the driver of the Mercedes S280, Henri Paul, were also pronounced dead at the scene. A fourth passenger in the car, a bodyguard, Trevor Rees Jones, survived. Although the media blamed the paparazzi following the car, a French judicial investigation in 1999 found that the car crash was caused by Henri Paul, who lost control of the Mercedes at high speed while being drunk. Paul was a deputy head of security at the Hotel Ritz at the time of the crash and had goaded the paparazzi waiting outside the hotel earlier. His inebriation may have been excrebated by antidepressants and traces of tranquilizing antipsychotics in his body. The investigation concluded that the photographers were not near the Mercedes when it crashed. After hearing evidence of the British inquest, a jury in 2008 returned a verdict of unlawful killing by Paul and the paparazzi pursuing the car. Diana's death caused a substantial outpouring of worldwide grief, including numerous floral tributes, and her funeral was watched by an estimated 2.5 billion people. That is a shit ton of people for the time that it was at. That's insane. That'd be like the queen dying right now. That's insanity. Anyways, the royal family were criticized in the press for the reaction to Diana's death, although they were simply following established protocol. Public interest in Diana has remained high and she has retained regular press coverage. Basically, let's do the backstory of what had happened before the crash proceeded. So events preceding the crash. On Saturday, August 30th, 1997, Diana left Sardina in a private jet and arrived in Paris with Dodi Fade, who was the son of Mohammed Al Fade. They had stopped there en route to London, having spent the preceding nine days together on board Mohammed Al Fade's yacht on the French and Italian Riviera. He had intended to stay there for the night, Mohamed Al Fayed was and is the owner of the Hotel Ritz in Paris. He also owned an apartment in Rue Arsène. Jose. See, these words are like French and I can't speak French, so I'm probably butchering the fuck out of this. Anyways, a short distance from the hotel, just off the Avenue des Champs Elysees. Henri Paul, the deputy head of security at the Ritz Hotel, had been instructed 
to drive the hired black 1994 Mercedes-Benz 280, which is the car that had crashed in the tunnel. In order to elude the paparazzi, a decoy vehicle left the Ritz first from the main entrance on the place Vendome, attracting a throng of photographers. Diana and Fade then departed from the hotel's rear entrance. Rue Cambin at around military time is a thing that I do not understand, but it says 0020. I believe that's actually 120 a.m. on August 31st, CEST. I'm going to take a guess that 0020 for military standard time is equivalent to 120 or 1220 a.m. on August 31st. Heading from the apartment in Rue Arsene Hussein, they did this to avoid the nearly 30 photographers waiting in the front of the hotel. The rear passengers, Trevor Rees Jones, a member of the Fade family's personal protection team, was in the right front passenger seat. It was believed that Diana and Dodie were not wearing seat belts. After leaving the Rue Cambin and crossing the Place de la Concorde, they drove along Cours La Reine and Cours Albert, the embankment road along the right bank of the River Sign into the Place de la Alma underpass. And now with the crash. What happened in the crash at around 12.23 a.m. at the entrance of the Ponce del Alma tunnel, Paul lost control. The car swerved to the left of the two-lane carriageway before colliding head-on with the 13th pillar supporting the roof at the speed of 105 km slash h, which is equivalent to 65 miles per hour. So that's really fucking fast. It then spun and hit the stone wall of the tunnel backwards, finally coming to a stop. The impact caused substantial damage, particularly to the front half of the vehicle as there was no guardrail between the pillars to prevent this. Witnesses arriving shortly after the accident reported smoke. Witnesses also reported that photographers on motorcycles swarmed the Mercedes sedan before it entered the tunnel. So clearly you can see the paparazzi is relentless. They didn't even let up even when this car was trying to get away from them. And essentially the paparazzi basically caused the car crash and caused the death of Princess Diana, which is insanely sad and so, so messed up. And so now we see the aftermath, which it says that as the victims lay in the wrecked car, the photographers who had been driving slower and were accordingly some distance behind the Mercedes reached the scene. The photographers were on motorcycles. Some rushed to help, tried to open the doors and help the victims. While some took pictures, so you can see, photographers did not let up, even when they saw the wreck and the passengers were basically very, very messed up and their bodies were bloody and all of that. They wouldn't even stop. Airbags were deployed. Police arrived on the scene around 10 minutes after the crash at 1.30 a.m. Question mark? And an ambulance was on site five minutes after the police, according to witnesses. France Info Radio reported that one photographer was beaten by witnesses who were horrified by the scene. Five of the photographers were taken into custody. Later, two others were detained and around 20 rolls of film were taken from the photographers. Police also impounded their vehicles. Firemen also arrived to help the remove the victims. Still conscious, Reese Jones, who had survived multiple serious facial injuries and a head contusion. The front occupant's airbags had functioned normally. The occupants were not wearing seat belts. Diana, who had been sitting in the right rear passenger seat, was still unconscious. Critically injured Diana was reported to murmur repeatedly, oh my god. And after the photographers and other helpers were pushed away by the police, leave me alone. In June 2007, the Channel 4 documentary, Diana, the witness in the tunnel claimed that the first person to touch Diana was Dr. Males, who chanced arrest and following external cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Her heart started beating again. She was moved to the SMAU ambulance at 1.18 a.m. Left the scene at 1.41 a.m. and arrived at the Piete Salipere Hospital. Wow, I did good French there. <laughs> Hospital at 2.06 a.m. Fade had been sitting in the left rear passenger seat and was shortly afterwards pronounced dead. Paul was declared dead on removal from the wreckage. Both were taken into the Institute Medico Vega, the Paris mortuary, not a hospital. Paul was later found to have a blood alcohol level of 1.75 grams per liter of blood, about 3.5 times the legal limit in France. Despite the attempts to save her, Diana's internal injuries were too extensive. Her heart had been displaced placed on the right side of her chest, which tore 
the pulmonary vein, and pericardium, despite lengthy resuscitation attempts, including internal cardiac massage. She died at 4 a.m. So finally, anesthesiologist Bruno Ryu announced her death at 6 a.m. at a news conference held at the hospital. Later that morning, Jean-Pierre Chevanment, French Minister of the Interior, visited the hospital with French Prime Minister Lionel Jospin. At around 5 a.m., Diana's former husband, Charles Prince of Wales, and her two older sisters, Lady Sarah McCorkelade and Lady Jane Fellows, arrived in Paris. The group visited the hospital along with French President Jacques Chiart and thanked the doctors for trying to save her life. Prince Charles accompanied Diana's body home on Sunday. Initial media reports stated Diana's car had collided with a pillar at 190 km, which is equivalent to 120 miles per hour, and that the speedometer's needle had jammed at that position. It was later announced that the car's speed on collision was about 95 to 110, which is 60 to 70 miles per hour. The car was certainly traveling much faster than the speed limit of 31 miles per hour. In 1999, a French investigation concluded that the Mercedes had come into contact with another vehicle, a white Fiat Uno, in the tunnel. The driver of that vehicle had never been traced and the specific vehicle has not been identified. It was remarked by Robin Cook, the British Foreign Secretary, that if the accident had been caused in part by being hounded by Pop Arazzi, that it would be doubly tragic. Diana's brother also blamed tabloid media for her death. An 18-month French judicial investigation concluded in 1999 that the crash was caused by Paul, who lost control at high speed while intoxicated. I would like to talk about some widely believed conspiracy theories about Princess Diana's death. So basically, it was said that global shock soon gave way to speculation about the role of the pursuing paparazzi, and for some about whether darker forces were at work, Diana was the world's most famous woman at the time, and her public discussion of her unhappy marriage had been a major, major embarrassment to Britain's royal family since she and Prince Charles had separated in 1992. Diana had written in the 1995 letters of fears that Charles was planning an accident in my car. Although she had also speculated about dying in a helicopter or airplane crash. The most vocal conspiracy theorist was Dodi's father, Mohammed al Faid, a wealthy businessman who owned the Ritz in Paris in London's Harrods department store. He insisted that Prince Philip, husband of Queen Elizabeth II, had masterminded a conspiracy by British spies to kill Diana and Dodie because he disapproved of the relationship. All faith claimed Diana was pregnant and planning to marry Dodie and that the royal family could not countenance the princess marrying a Muslim. In 2008, All Fade told an inquest that the list of alleged conspirators included Philip Charles, former Prime Minister Tony Blair, Diana's sister Sarah McConkelade, two former London police chiefs, and the CIA. Several investigators have ruled out a criminal conspiracy in Diana's death. A French court ruled that in 1999 that the car crash was an accident caused by Paul who was drunk and driving at twice the legal speed limit. A three-year British inquiry led by Metropolitan Police Chief John Stevens also found that Paul was drunk and driving at a high speed to elude pursuing photographers. Stevens' report said Diana was not pregnant and had not been planning to marry Dodie. Stevens concluded that in 2006 that Diana's death was a tragic accident. In 2007, an inquest opened before a judge and jury at London's Royal Courts of Injustice. It heard from 240 witnesses before concluding in April 2008 that Diana had been unlawfully killed through the reckless actions of driver Paul and the paparazzi. In 2013, British police investigated allegations by an anonymous former soldier that Britain's Special Forces United, the SAS, was involved in Diana's death. Police concluded that there was no credible evidence and declined to reopen the investigation. And yet, questions remain. Enough mysteries remain to ensure that the Diana conspiracy theories will never be completely silenced. There is no surveillance camera footage of the crash, although there were cameras in the tunnel. Some witnesses reported seeing a bright flash in the tunnel just before the accident, though others did not. And police have never traced a white Fiat car that was seen in the tunnel and may have collided with Diana's vehicle before the crash. Pauline McLar and co-author of Royal Fever, The British Monarchy in Consumer Culture, said conspiracy theories about celebrity deaths are not only common but durable. Human nature refuses to believe that something as random as a car accident could kill someone as special 
as Diana. She said, when you have icons, it's very hard to believe that they can just come to an end in such a futile way. So that concludes that discussion. He was saying today, the car crash that killed Princess Diana on August 31st, 1997 was a tragedy that shocked the world. Multiple investigations ultimately attributed her unlawful death and the reckless driving of both her chauffeur, Henri Paul, who was ruled to be drunk at the time and the paparazzi dangerously tailing her limousine. But two decades later, conspiracy theories still endure, pointing fingers at everyone from the paparazzi and the royal family to the French police and British M16 Foreign Intelligence Service to their roles in the death of Diana and her then boyfriend, Dodie Faye. With August 31st, 2017, marking the 20 year anniversary of Diana's death, revisit the unsubstantiated theories surrounding what exactly happened in Paris's Pont de l'Alma tunnel that night. Number one, Diana and Fade's relationship doomed the couple. One common theory persists that Diana and Fade's public courtship cost them their lives. Martin Greger, author of Diana, The Last Days, explains in the TLC documentary, Princess Diana, Tragedy or Treason, that Fade was planning on proposing to Diana the night of that crash. Hours before the crash, Dodie decided to go to the jeweler, Rapassi, who showed him a new ring, which was part of the series called Tell Me Yes. He said he didn't buy one of the rings, but did order the ring for Diana, and that was delivered to the Imperial Suite in the Ritz Hotel. After his son's death, Al Fade famously launched his own investigation into the accident, believing the royal family was biased against his son because he was an Egyptian Muslim. Al Fade reasoned the British establishment wanted to prevent Diana and Dodie from marrying so that Prince William, a future king, and Prince Harry would not have a Muslim stepfather. Number two, Diana was pregnant. Central to Al Fade's belief that foul play was behind Diana's death were his claims that Diana was pregnant with Dodie's child at the time of the crash. Al Fade even publicly claimed that Diana owned him on the night she died to tell him about the pregnancy. Adding fuel to the conspiracy theorist's fire that Diana was expecting was the fact that she was partially embalmed after her death, a procedure that would make it impossible to test her blood to see if she was pregnant. She was embalmed before the autopsy, which is against the law. Richard Belzer, author and Diana conspiracy theorist, told tragedy or treason. He couldn't prove she was pregnant or not because she was embalmed. So that's incredibly ghoulishly suspicious to order an embalming, especially in such a high profile death. Operation Paget, British police investigation into the conspiracy theories before Diana's death ran tests on Diana's blood found in the wrecked Mercedes, finding no trace of the HCG hormone that indicates pregnancy. Tests have shown that it is possible to detect pregnancy hormone HCG in very old blood stains. The blood stain from the carpet was tested and no HCG was detected. Number three, Henri Paul plotted the murder. As for which parties plotted the assassination of Diana Diana and Fade, conspiracy theorists' favorite suspects include the couple's driver, Henri Paul. Paul was the security manager at the Ritz Hotel, which was owned by Al Fade and had been in the family's employment for a decade. As the theory goes, Paul was paid off by the elite British intelligence agency, M16, to assassinate Diana and Fade. Former M16 officer Richard Tomlinson famously attested that he had seen Paul's file and could confirm that he was actually an informant. In quotes, Henri Paul, who was the driver of the car, was also the security manager at the Ritz Hotel and he was a M16 informant. I saw his file, end quote. Former British intelligence officer Richard Tomlinson told reporters at the time, quote, it's been well established that he went missing for two or three hours the night of his death, end quote. Despite the fact that Paul had only made $35,000 a year, he had nearly $250,000 in his bank account at the time of his death. In addition to a significant amount of the crash with him when he had died, prompting further speculation that the M16 had paid him off. Quote, I am certain that this money originated from M16. Tomlinson had originated from M16, end quote. Tomlinson told a French judge in 1998, this is speculation on my part, but if he was an M16 informant, it would be quite normal for him to receive money, end quote. Number four, the white Fiat Uno. Another suspect was the driver of the white Fiat 
that reportedly followed Diana into the tunnel, leaving forensic evidence on the Mercedes that suggested the two cars made glancing contact. Per the Operation Payjet, quote, obviously that was a big story because it was. Where's my white car? Who was driving it? Were they there to blame somehow? David Lee, former Daily Mirror editor, told Tragedy or Treason. Conspiracy theorists attempt to link that the Fiat to James Anderson and thus link the well-known French paparazzo to the crash scene, claiming that he was also an M16 informant. Operation Paget accepted his alibi that he was home with his wife during the crash. Andenson was found dead in his car in the French countryside in 2000. Police ruled it a suicide. All Fayette and the other doubters claimed that he was killed for the part they believed he played in the alleged assassination of Diana and Dodie. Number five, the flash before the crash. French eyewitness Francois Levité, who was also driving through the tunnel ahead of Diana's Mercedes, claimed that they had seen a bright light at the crash's point of impact. That kicked off the flash before the crash theory with Tomlinson, the M16 agent, claiming that he had seen a similar flashing strobe light in his training, used it to disorient drivers as method of vehicular assassination. Levy Stray's wife, who was sitting next to him in the car, contradicted his testimony, and Operation Payjet later concluded that no such flash had taken place. And so that concludes some of the many conspiracy theories surrounding Diana and Dodie's death. And although very sad, as interesting as this case is, I believe that the conspiracy theories surrounding it will never die, and that people will continue to theorize and talk about this for years to come, especially with her anniversary of her death having just come up on August 31st, just, you know, a couple months ago. And many people are still talking about this to this day, and it is an incredibly sad, sad thing that happened. And it just goes to show how intense and crazy the paparazzi can be just to get that one shot. So I hope that you guys liked this video, and I hope that this series will be fun, and I'm very excited to continue with it. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe and share this video with your friends, your family, anyone and everyone. Be sure to check back next week because I'll be here again with another conspiracy video most likely. Leave your comments down below and please leave me any suggestions you have for what you would like to see. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you guys next week and I'll catch you guys later. Okay, thanks, bye.